Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be part five of Sinistar. Um, what I want to do first is make a volume pot because I do not have one for Sinistar. This is the one out of my um, joust. So I want to put this back in the joust. Um, I did find this pot here and it's 5,000 ohms, which equals 5K. And that's what this is. This is a 5K pot. Um, so we shouldn't have any problem using this pot. Now, I don't have, this is a shielded wire. So they're using this one right here as their shield. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try something. Um, I think they have a shielded wire here, maybe to keep interference out of the speaker when it's kind of sitting next to the circuit boards. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm going to try something here. I'm going to use my red wire, my black wire, just like they have. I'm going to use this gray wire as my shield wire, okay? Then after I do that, after I use this gray wire as my shield wire, I'm going to take some copper tape, and I'm going to cover all three wires with copper tape. Then I'm going to slide them into some heat shrink tube, and then we'll heat shrink it all together. And we'll see if that copper tape helps as a shield because I think all this wire right here is doing is once it goes into here I think it's kind of covering the red and black wire up so by me using uh, gray and then covering it with copper I think we should probably get probably should work I would think I mean we'll try it we could probably try it without it but I mean it's not going to hurt to do it I don't think it's going to make any difference so I'm going to take my three wires here, and I am going to cut them to about the same length as what we currently have here, which is right here. We need to put ends on them. we got to put a plug end. So let's crimp on some ends here. We need a four prong plug, which we have one right here. And these plugs have the nub on it so that it clips on. So let's kind of move that one out of the way for now. Let's get these plug ends on and we'll get them pushed into the plug and then we'll solder the other side onto the, um, the pot. I had one leftover pin from when I did those other ones on the game when I was working on it on the last on part number four. You know what this one's a little different looking. I have such a hard time with these little ones. Well, that one didn't work. Yep, screwed that one up. Let's try that again. Sometimes these are spread a little too wide for the tool. You got to push them in a little bit.
Okay, let's go ahead and put these into the plug. Make sure I slide them in the right direction. I put that in right or wrong. I think I put it in upside down. Can't tell. I did. I think I did. No. No, that's right. I did it right. Then gray goes all the way in the outside. Oh, man. <laughs> Grab the wrong wire. Gray's got to go out there. I got to take it, this one back out. Or if I could just push it down with this. I broke it. See, sometimes these just don't go well. Sometimes it's just a pain in the butt and you screw them up. Usually I don't have problems, but every once in a while it happens. So to put this one in. This is the black one. Okay, so we got those two. So I got to re put a new end on the gray one because I pulled too hard and ripped it out. Try not to waste too many of these pins. They're cheap but it's just the fact they have to order more. I like to keep these little ones in a Ziploc bag because if you spill them, they go everywhere. Round three. Why are these not staying on? What the heck? It didn't crimp it all the way. What the heck is going on? I mean, I'm on the tightest crimping setting. The other two did. I mean, it slid back on. It's like it's not crimped all the way. I just felt it crimp more. Now it's on. Huh. I don't know. And you'll feel it click in place. Okay, we have all those in. Now, I want to put some copper tape over this. Let's get the widest one I have. Which, well... This is the widest, hasn't been opened yet. Go figure. You could buy this copper tape on Amazon. I don't know if this is going to do anything. I don't really think it's going to hurt anything at all. Probably use two pieces. One on the bottom and one on the top. <laughs> Let's 
stick this back in the bag real quick before I knock it off the counter and then it goes rolling and then it unrolls half of the roll. Now, whether or not I just wasted my time doing that, I don't know. But, it only took a couple seconds, so it wasn't that big a deal. Let's cut some heat shrink tube here. Let's take it a little bit farther. I may have to use my lighter still because it's raining really bad outside and I don't feel like getting soaking wet running back to the shop. So, we're going to sit here with a lighter and shrink this down. Once we get this heat shrink tube on, we can solder it onto the pot and then we will go test it. See if we get any weird hum or anything like that, which I'm hoping we don't. This might take a minute. Hair dryer would probably work better. But I don't feel like going upstairs, so we are going to make this work. They say that um, copper is a better shield than aluminum. Ooh, it's getting hot. That metal on that lighter is getting hot. I usually always have my mini torch in here, but I've been putting a lot of those uh, crimp connectors with the uh, heat shrink already on them on, the, on that 59 Impala because a lot of the wiring is just messed up on that car. And I've been having to uh, basically cut off a bunch of connectors and put new ones on. And I like using that heat shrink connectors because it keeps the water out of the connection you know, to help stop with corrosion because it is a car that's out in the elements. We're almost done with this part. Let me solder these wires on and we'll just follow the same as this volume pot from uh, Joust. Should be the same configuration. And we're just going to use this bracket that is already on this uh, volume pot. It's a little bit different than the original one, but it'll be fine. I mean, try my best to use and find all original parts, but sometimes you just can't get them all. And I don't think this is a big enough of a deal to really worry about it. I'm going to keep that lighter standing up so it doesn't fall over and burn the counter. So now I got to cut these three, or not cut them, uh, pull the casing off of them so we could solder them onto this volume pot and then we are going to go give this thing a try. As long as it works then I want to uh, rebuild the monitor chassis to see if I can get rid of that curve. Just going to do a cap kit on it and see what that does. Which I, I won't video the whole cap kit. I'll just show the process of it because it's time consuming and there's a million videos on YouTube on how to cap a monitor. Okay, my heat gun should be plenty, or my uh, solder gun should be plenty hot. So let's get these old ones off. Let's do one at a time here. Actually, I'm going to use this one as my reference. So my shielded wire is all the way out here, which makes sense because this wire on here is just a thicker black wire. 
and then these two are thinner. So the first one, these are actually the same colors of what's on those. Sometimes it could be a pain to get these off, to cut them. You know what, I can cut all three. I have that other one for reference. So black is first. Okay, I got it through the hole, and then I wrapped it over the top. Just put a blob of solder on there. Beautiful. Red is my second one. Get it ready. Slid through, want to make sure I get it up over. Want to make sure there's no strands, and I could see one right now. Just want to make sure that it's not touching any metal or one of the other terminals. It's literally one strand of wire hanging down, which I just got it. So I put some solder on this one. Okay, there's our new wire. We can go test it and see if it works. Okay, I just plugged it in. Plugged it in. Boy, that's loud. I'll have to turn it down. There are some credits on here. So let me uh, credit it up. We'll see if we can turn it down. It works. Cool. We got a volume pot. Now what I'm going to do is get this turned off. We're going to try to, I'm going to recap the monitor and see if I can't get rid of that curve and clean it up a little bit. So we're going to turn it off. I need to unplug the monitor and then we'll come back and we will um, uh, get it, the chassis and everything out of it. Okay. Let me get this unplugged. Power here and then our video wire. Let's get it spun around. Then we gotta discharge it. We use my trusty uh, flathead screwdriver. I gotta I got put a new alligator clip on the end of this uh, wire. It broke off a while ago and never did anything with it. Need to make the wire longer. Okay, we're through the metal. I'm gonna make sure I'm only holding the handle. And 
just like that it falls back out let's wrap it around this bolt nope around here yep there's our big spark second i heard a second spark let's pull this back and look okay all right we are discharged now we can unscrew this chassis from the uh tube or the frame we got to change this frame out anyway so let's get this chassis off and then i'll do that later looks like it's a phillips screw on this one some of these have uh oh it's the wrong screw on this side it's nice this should just have two screws that's hold this in and we need to take the degauss wire out plug in and then we got to take the yoke wires out, which are right here. So we're out there and there. And then these two screws come out, which I think these normally are uh, hex head screws, quarter inch. We'll put two new ones in that match because these are both different. And somebody just uh, threw that together. And then we have the neck board ground which has been cut and electrical taped together. I think what I might do with this uh, is um, put a spade connector on one side and then a male and a female, and then you could just push the two together with heat shrink around it. So now we have the chassis disconnected. We can go and see what this is, what number, and I should have a cap kit for it, I hope. cap kit. And I'll be right back. Somebody's done some work to this. Why is that just floating there loose? Huh. Look at that. Right here. The pads are screwed up on the board. Completely loose. So I gotta fix that. Somebody's put, uh, somebody recap this whole thing. At one point, this has been recapped. But some of the caps are different colors, which I don't know, like this one right here. This, this to me looks like an old cap by the color of it. Um, a lot of them do look new, but that one definitely does not look new, but who knows. All right, let me go grab some a cap kit and I'll come back. All right, I forgot to tell you guys, this is a, a K4900. The model number is 4951, I believe it is. So I have a cap kit here for a 4900. Um, got my pen ready. My uh, desoldering iron is heating up. We'll do a couple on the camera and then uh, I'll probably do the rest off, but somebody's gone through here and replaced everything. But this one right here that's wiggling, that's an interesting one. I've never seen them hold it up off the board like that either, that high. That's a weird setup. I know those usually get hot, I think. Maybe it's uh, to keep it cooler. I don't know. But let's open this up. Hopefully this is a complete kit. I remember I stole a capacitor out of one of these kits. I have more than one kit. So, if I'm missing one, I should have it. These don't have a ton of caps. So, let's go with, um, let's see what we got going on here. And even this has been replaced, the, the uh, big one here. Filter cap, I think it is called. 
I'm not really good with all the names of this stuff. Cap capacitors are rolling around everywhere. We'll use this bag to put the old ones on. So let's start with, um, I don't know how well I can read the writing from up top. Let's see what this one is underneath. C506. So let's see where 506 is. Right here, C506. That's a 22 UF160. So we need a 22160. I'm going to kind of sort these like I usually do. Makes it a little bit easier. 22160. Right here, 506. So let's go ahead and pop that one out. Even if these caps look good, I'm just going to change them. For the $10 or whatever this cap kit costs, it's not even worth messing with it. Okay, there's our first one. Our plus sign is this way, going towards the towards the floor right now and as you pull it out look because it could be in there wrong so negative is going up towards the ceiling so this is our first one right here so negative up towards the ceiling bend them over let's go on to one more here let's go down to this one right in this area Somewhere right here, right here, C205. Oh, I gotta mark this one off so I know I did it. So now we need a C205. Usually I'll go in order, but this one is a little harder for me to see, so I just kind of pick them and find them. C205, right here, C205 is a 470 25 volt. 470 25 volt. Four seventy twenty five volt right there. Pop this one out. Looks like all the pluses are going towards the floor when I stand the chassis up on end. But we'll still verify it. Yep, negative's going up. Now this is cap 205. We'll mark that off the list. So basically, I'm going to go through and do the rest of these, and then I'm going to come back, and we're going to solder them all at the same time, and then um, we'll fix up this one that's loose, this thing. Which side's that on? It's over here. This thing that's completely loose. We'll touch that up. Hopefully, I can. The traces are definitely... I think it's still connected, though. I No, this side's rocking, but this side... It's actually lifting the trace off the board. So that's pretty awesome. But we'll get that fixed up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these put in. We'll come back. We'll solder all these. We'll touch that up. And then we'll be able to put it back in and see if it makes a difference. Okay. All the caps are taken out and the new ones are put in. Now I'll go over a few things while I'm waiting for my solder gun to heat up. <clears throat> what I found was, I wrote it on the paper here. Um, trace 308 they have a jumper wire going from here this cap over to there I don't know why I'm gonna solder it back in but this pad right here is loose so they overheated that one I think they took these old caps out with the solder gun um, there's another lifted pad on I think it was I think it was 702 maybe or 311 one of them had another lifted pad. And then I also found, what else did I find? Um, oh, you know what? One of them had a loose solder joint. It wasn't even soldered all the way. So now this one right here, there's a couple of them that have a lifted pad. I'm gonna scratch with a um, screwdriver through the green coating so that I can bridge some solder over farther to kind of hold that pad down. So let me go grab a little uh, flathead screwdriver. Okay, let's get this swapped over. 
So first thing I want to do is take it off this bent frame and I'll show you what's bent on it once I get it off here. Um, It's usually really easy to do. Okay. Now you can lay this on its face on the carpet as long as it's not messed up. As long as you don't have a bunch of stuff on the carpet. But let me lay this down. Cause I gotta check something on this other frame. But look at this frame. It's all wobbly, all bent up. Somebody had bent these and I tried to bend it back and it just wasn't looking good. But see how they bent it all all up so that it would uh they could put it in the cabinet the other direction. Now this new frame here is a little different. So I'm wondering, looks like the only difference is is maybe this plate's upside down. Yep. Somebody put this plate on upside down. So we need to take this plate, rotate it, and we should look just like this one when we're done. So let's, because uh, this didn't have a tube on it. I just happened to have this one laying around. I have no idea where it came from. Make it a mess once again. Do what I'm best at. Okay, that's one side. Pop this side off, we'll rotate it around. Make sure we rotate it the right way. It's gonna go like this. Okay, at least this is the exact same one. And it says 49.52, and that one says 49.51. Close enough. Um, it goes this way. Yep. So this goes on like this. Is that right? No. It goes on like this. This other frame, I'm just going to throw it away. Maybe I'll save that bottom tray. I think I have another one of these frames still, too. I don't know. Maybe I'll just hang on to it for an emergency. Never know. I mean, I'm sure I can bend it back. It's not going to look perfect, but I guess if I need it for something, I have it. Horizontal ones are a lot easier to come by than the vertical ones, I think, in my opinion. Now, the two bolts that hold the, uh, I don't even know if you guys could see what I was doing. I guess sort of. The two bolts that hold the chassis, we're going to put the right ones in for that too. Okay, now we are going to... Lift this back up. I'm going to take these bolts out of here. I'm going to put these bolts back into this other one. Somehow I lost. Oh, there it is. We'll put these ones into here. I'll just save this one. I'll put those back in there afterwards. I'll loosen these ones up here.
Okay. That is back together. Go grab the chassis. Okay, we're gonna get this bolted back in the correct way with the correct bolts. Screws, whatever you wanna call them. These are usually what's in these ones are these uh, quarter inch headed screws. Make sure you get it on this plastic peg. You get it in there so that the back doesn't fall and hit the plastic. Right now I'm hooking up my yoke wire. And then we have our degauss coil. Slide it into that clip in the back. There's some cork that it sits on. Nah, drill's not gonna fit. These are a little bit bigger because they had those other screws in there, so I wanted to make sure they tightened up good. Can't get the stupid screwdriver in there. It's on the other side of the cabinet. I don't know if it'll be long enough though. I took the marquee back off when I was working on that uh, sound because I wanted to make sure that the speaker wasn't messed up. So I got to put that back together. neck board to hook up and we have this wire here you know what maybe I'll just cap it together I'll just cap it together it's got a little bit of a shock there usually I'll discharge that tube eh, it got me a tiny bit but it didn't hurt um, some people will use an electrical cap that screws on so let me go uh, see how I want to cap this I was going to put some connectors on there, but I think twisting them is probably just going to be fine. We're just going to put a crimp cap on it. Cut it down, it's a little too long. Okay. Now we can put the neck board on. Okay, now we can put our cup on, which I've already discharged the monitor for a second time with my arm, so we're good now. I, I had uh, touched it over there. I've been shocked with 220 volt electrical in the house, so eh, be all right. Okay, let's plug it in and turn it on and see what it does. See if we get rid of that curl or see what happens. This plug is kind of crappy. It's tight the way they made it. They kind of put it on backwards. I might end up changing that plug in. I'm not sure yet. So I don't like how tight it is. I 
All right, that's in. Plug in the power. Okay, turn off this light. Let's turn it on. Okay. All right, that corner looks a little bit better. Um, we're out of adjustment here. It apparently started a game. I gotta get the rest of that control panel wired up. Side is still messed up. I'm gonna have to research that and see what I can do with it. off the research that the caps didn't do anything for that okay guys monitor is fixed the curl is gone thanks to charlie from overtime arcade and mike from amateur arcade restoration i think it is on youtube um they helped me out what turned out to be a sync wire issue what the problem was is the two sync wires that were put into the new harness were reversed so I had to swap the two around and that fixed the issue. It got rid of the curl. I was able to bring my image in some so it's not hugging the outside edge of the screen. Everything looks good. I think this is about as best as it's going to get. So thanks to those guys for the help. I really appreciate it. And I'm uh, very thankful that everybody in this hobby is willing to help everybody out. Um, that makes a huge difference. It makes it a heck of a lot easier to restore these games because not everybody knows everything. And, you know, it's nice to... Uh, have the support so now what i'm going to do is um turn the lights back on get this monitor unplugged get it bolted to the tray that slides into the cabinet and um you know that'll probably be about it on this video and then the next one i'm hoping to wrap this game up so i will be back in a little bit it's actually mike's amateur monitor repair on youtube i think it is i don't know i can't keep i don't know what it exactly if that's it or not but i'm sure if you look it up you'll find it um so those guys are real helpful okay i um unplugged the monitor moved it away i took the two bolts out that hold this tray into the cabinet so we can slide that tray out and get the monitor bolted to it now um i what other thing i did as well was i changed this plug end 
for the monitor once I realized that these two sync wires were backwards. I went ahead and put the correct one on. So now it has these clips on the edge here and it actually seats all the way down onto the plugs on the monitor. The other one was only going down halfway and it was hitting the, um, I don't know what you call that, that piece of plastic that locks it in. So it didn't want to push all the way down. So now it'll lock in the right way and we won't have that issue. So now let's get this, um, piece of wood slid out here and we can get this bolted to the bottom of the monitor and then slide it in there. I definitely like this feature about these uh, cabinets. Um, I'm going to have to go grab a couple um, carriage bolts. If you see here, see how they're recessed. You can use a carriage bolt or you can use a regular bolt too. So it doesn't really matter. But on this one, they are, they do have square holes in them, so a carriage bolt does work better. So I'm going to go grab four 3 8 carriage bolts and uh, nuts and a couple washers. We'll get the monitor mounted to this board, and then um, we'll slide it back in. We'll get it plugged in, um, and then we'll see if we can get that uh, monitor surround put on. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to mount yet because uh, I think it just screws through the wood. This was in the cabinet and they had it going horizontally, not vertically, because the game original, you know, whoever they changed the game to, they had to switch this around. But it looks like there are a couple holes drilled here, and I'm guessing those are the original holes. These ones, I don't, these ones, I think they put it in there. Um, and then there's two holes down here, and you can see they had cut this a tiny bit down here to fit horizontal, horizontally versus vertically. But I don't think that's going to pose an issue because the uh, monitor surround, the plexiglass, will cover all that. So let me go grab a couple carriage bolts. Let's get this mounted to the piece of wood. And then we'll get it slid in the cabinet. And then we'll spin the cabinet around. Okay, I have some carriage bolts here. I'm not going to use washers because I have these nuts that have a flange on them. So they act as a washer. And also they have, uh, they're like knurled on the back side. So it'll grip into the metal and keep them from loosening up, which I don't think it's going to ever have a problem with it loosening up. But I'm trying to get some decent lighting here so you can see what's going on. I, once again, yes, I do have a mess. I'm really good at making messes. Um, so let's go ahead and get this board. Let's get the uh, carriage bolts into the board first. Slide that that way slide these in from the bottom it's probably best to use the carriage bolts if you have them you can go to the hardware store and get them if you don't um because they kind of hold themselves in place because of the square holes in the wood so i think uh after this video one more video should wrap this up i gotta figure out that coin door wiring somebody cut it all the plug's gone and i don't have that style plug to replace it so either A, I order a plug, or B, I just swap it out for a different style plug, which really isn't a big deal. Um, what's going on here? Is this going to line up? Yes. Slide it on just like that. Um, I'm not going to tighten these down super tight right now. Well... Yeah, because I don't know exactly if the monitor needs to be shifted all the way forward or all the way to the back. So it's kind of in the middle right now. So I could probably just leave it there for now. Got to grab a wrench. I was going to use my nut driver on my drill, but um, it doesn't. Uh, these DeWalt nut drivers have a magnet right there, so it doesn't have a hollow part. So the bolt can't slide into there. So they, they, this won't work for that. But that's not a big deal. I'll tighten these afterwards. I'm just going to kind of hand tighten them as tight as I can get them.
Okay, we're hand tight there. So now we're going to pick this up and slide it back in. Careful of the neck here. Now make sure you put your uh, your uh, grounding strap on there. Uh, you know, I don't think that's where it goes. I think it goes to the monitor itself. But for right now, we'll just leave it as is. Um, this has a locking washer, and then the flat washer is kind of embedded into the wood, so we'll just leave that in there. I didn't take it back out. Now this, I can use my drill to tighten. Yeah, you know what? This this ground strap's not right. I don't know why they had it on there. But that goes on the monitor. I know it does. Because it'd be dumb. Why would it ground a wood? It's going to do it no good grounding onto wood. So let's just, since these are just finger tight, I should be able to loosen this nut up. We'll put it on that one there. And at least then we are we have the frame of this monitor grounded. Just like everything else in the cabinet. Okay. Just leave that hand tightened for now. So now let's plug our video back in. This is our volume pot. I need to mount that still. I'm just gonna set it on top of the coin box down there. It's a wooden coin box, so I don't have to worry about it getting messed up. So now we have to bring up our video wire here oh another thing um if you guys are not real familiar with williams cabinets here um on a williams cabinet if you can mount you can adjust the monitor from behind it doesn't work the greatest it was a good idea but if you take these two bolts out here here and here okay and you can slide this tray back to four different positions if you look on this piece of wood up here there are four holes that are drilled you can slide this back and take one of these bolts and slide it into this hole right here. So if you slide it back to the first hole, you can slide the bolt through there and it'll hold it right there. So you can do four adjustments back. And by doing that, up here is a piece of stainless steel that needs cleaned. But there's a piece of stainless steel up there and it acts as a mirror. So you can kind of look when you're in the back of the cabinet, you can kind of look into that piece of stainless up there at your picture and do adjustments to it as far as maybe your focus is out or your colors are a little bit off you can do that um usually i'll take those out and i'll run my buffer on them and polish them up real good that one i haven't done it to yet i'll probably just do that off camera it's not really a big deal just it's just basically cleaning up a piece of stainless steel that's polished so now what i want to do is get this wire up here there is a uh I don't know if hoop right there. I don't know what you call it. I thought there was two on these, but maybe not. I don't see a hole for another one, so I guess that just sits like that. And I'm going to stick it into this one to kind of take up some of its extra slack. And then we'll bring this around here and we'll get this plugged in first. Then we just got to plug in the power to the monitor. But yep, that plug's seating down all the way now. So that's a nice connection. Take this power wire, we'll run it back like this. And where's it at down here? All these wires are pretty long. So there's a hoop right here, we'll put it around. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna coil it up once and put it around this hoop. Wire tie, whatever you call it, clamp. And then we'll bring it over to here. At least then we don't have a bunch of extra wire flopping around. So we'll get that plugged in. And this is my control panel harness. I'm gonna unplug it for now because I don't want to throw it in the cabinet. And, Jesus, that's a tight fit. I don't wanna throw this in the cabinet with bare wires. 
and short it onto something. So we'll just do that for now. We'll take that back out. It's not like we're going to be playing a game anytime soon. I got to get that control panel finished, which that'll be in the next video as well. So there might be two more videos. I'm not sure yet. What I'm going to do is just clamp this shut with one for now. With one clamp. Get this spun around. We'll turn it back on. I got to put the marquee back in it as well because I had that back out when uh, I was having that issue with the video or audio. And I still don't know if the voice works yet because um, I haven't been able to really play a game and I don't think it works unless you're playing a game. Let me uh, lift up this tripod here a little bit. The monitor does have a little bit of screen burn from the previous game that was put in this cabinet. But I mean, there's only so much you can do. There's only so many monitors out, out there, you know? So let's see how, um, let's put the marquee back together real quick. We can turn it on. Just wanna get this put back in before it's, the screws get kicked all over the place and everything else. Well, this is a tight fit. I thought about shaving a little bit off the edge, but I didn't want to run the risk of chipping it. So we're just going to go ahead and leave that as is because that would be my luck. We still have to put the T-molding on this cabinet too. So yeah, it's probably going to be two more parts to get it wrapped up properly. I'm just looking for my uh, screws here. But that monitor looks a heck of a lot nicer. I'll have to turn the lights off and show you afterwards. But once this project's done, I want to get the bubbles cabinet stripped down, see what it looks like artwork-wise, and then I want to get Stargate done. So I want to get these last two Williams games completed so that we're done with that part. With those games, rather. I have just about everything here for Paperboy. I'm waiting on a couple more parts to come. I should have everything for that, I believe. And the paper boy, I'm going to be using a um, championship sprite um, wiring harness, power supply, and audio board because I couldn't find a wiring harness for paper boy right now. Um, so you can use championship sprite. Um, wiring harness and everything because that cabinet was designed to be swapped out to Paperboy. So you just got to make sure you use the same power supply, power brick, all that stuff from Championship Sprite. You can't, you can't intermix the two. So here's our surround. I don't know how this mounts in this cabinet. It's like there's nothing to screw it to. very weird I mean something could have gotten moved there's a monitor need to be shifted back some I think it's already pretty much back all the way that's as back as far as back as it goes because I know like on Robotron and Joust it goes in this way and then you just put some screws into the wood here to hold it I mean it's gonna work I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to mount it. I just don't know. I mean, I don't know how it originally mounted. Maybe I should screw it like this to the wood and then slide that monitor into it. That's probably what it is. Now, I'll bet you if I look from the back, there's probably some screws that you can probably see. Holes, maybe. Maybe. No. 
Maybe it used a different one. But we're going to make this one work. Because I don't think it's going to be that difficult to make it work. I need to clean that up a little bit. Some sort of residue on there. But we're going to make that work. Slide the monitor forward. As far forward as it goes. So if I screw it to the piece of wood, I think it'll be just fine. That'll work. I'll just put two screws in the bottom here. Should be all I need to hold it. So let me uh, push this back and rotate this so I can use these two holes that are still good. Slide this forward again. Kind of get it where I want to. I know I need to lift it up a little bit like that. So I need to kind of put something under there to hold that up in the air while I put a couple screws into it. Maybe this Phillips bit might be just all I need to kind of bring this up in the air. Or I'll lose it, one or the other. That actually looks pretty good right there. So I'm just going to use that as my spacer. I'm going to go around back and put a couple screws in there. And that should hold that in place. I'm going to use two of these screws here. They are about half inch long. Hopefully I can reach there and get a screw in there. I think I can. I'm going to use this drill where I can straighten it out to try to make it in there a little bit easier. We are good. Now I gotta get my bit out of there that was holding it up in the air. Maybe. Put my hand under here just in case it falls. All right. Now, let's see about putting that piece of uh, plexiglass on it. See what it looks like. A chip on it. Didn't even notice that. It got chipped and, and shipping. That sucks. The whole corner is busted out right there. Hopefully that's hidden up there. Didn't even notice it. Never unpackaged it. Well, it is what it is. Okay, good, it's hidden. Turn off the lights, we'll take a look at it. You know what, we'll do the team molding in this episode. I don't even know how long it's been. But that's what it's looking like so far. I think that picture actually looks pretty darn good. I'm happy with that. Can't play a game yet, I'd like to, but soon, soon enough, we'll get that control panel fixed and we'll go from there. Um, I think the colors are pretty good too. Not too bad, it's a little blurry to me unless I'm going blind, which that could very well be too. Um, looks like it might be a hair of an angle. I might need to take and rotate that yoke a tiny bit. I wonder if I can do that. Let me see if I can bring that down a little bit. Let's see if I can get it to stay there. that help? Yes, it did. That definitely helped. Maybe a little too far. Yeah, we're pretty good there. 
No, I think it's a little too far. Let me take it back a tiny bit. Okay. All right, so let me turn the lights back on. Let's go ahead and get the team molding put on it, and then we'll end this video. This is part five of the Sinistar. We are really close to getting this thing finished up, guys. So let me get this turned back on and go grab the team molding and we'll put that on. We're using the black texture team molding like all the other Williams cabinets use. Okay, let's get the team molding put on. On these ones, it does, they do wrap a tiny bit underneath, but I'm, I don't, I haven't been doing that. I've just been taking them to the bottom and cutting them straight because on these ones, they literally only go under like three quarters of an inch and it just seems like it always wants to pop back out down there. So I just cut them straight at the bottom. Now this is a smaller roll. I have some bigger rolls of this stuff too, but I'm trying to use up some of the smaller rolls I have. This is a 23 foot roll, which should be plenty long enough to do it. So let's start. Usually it's cut pretty straight. This one's a little bit crooked. So what I'll do is I'll let the bottom here stay down a little bit and I'll just cut it with my knife afterwards. If I have to cut that, nope, not that one. Sorry about that, got interrupted again. So sometimes you got to cut the corners, sometimes you can pound them in. This one seems to be going in so far. side cut it flat on the back here and we'll trim this bottom down which I don't know if the camera can see okay one more side to go all right Cut it on the back here. All right, we have T molding. 
So now we just need a control panel, door locks. What else do we need to do here? Oh, coin door wiring. That's going to be a nightmare. So, all right, guys, this is going to end part five of the Sinistar. It's looking good. Um, if you guys are liking what you're seeing, please like, subscribe. Don't forget to check out um, Overtime Arcade if you guys haven't. Uh, Charlie from Overtime Arcade, he's always a big help. Um, and Mike's, I think it's called Mike's Amateur Monitor Repair on YouTube. I think that's the name of it now that I'm thinking of it. Um, check his channel out as well. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.